video again. You know, this year we've tried to kind of mix it up a little bit. We've done stuff like the trout show. If you didn't see the little rainbow trout show with the kids, that was an interesting one. Catfishing, a little bit different. Something we've been doing for a long time, but decided to kind of put it on video. Same thing could be said for what we're about to do today. Salmon fishing. Lake Michigan, Captain Chris, you've seen him with us uh, shoot all kinds of stuff, fixing stuff, things like that in the past. And Captain Chip Cartwright, owner of Silver Streak Lures. We are heading over to Ludington, Michigan to do some salmon fishing with Captain Chip and Captain Chris. And basically, really, we're going to test a lot of lures. We've got a bunch of new things kind of in the works. And so some of the stuff we're going to be able to video and some of the stuff we can't video, to be perfectly honest. But we figure why not throw a camera on here and there to show you some big salmon catches. At least that's the here we are, Lake Michigan, Captain Chris, Captain Chip on the tuna boat, a.k.a. the Silver Street test boat. That's what we're doing. Working on some new lures, testing out some new colors so that when you pick them out of the package, they actually work, believe it or not. So we're running some coppers. Like basically what the guys used to use, like lead core, but copper lines, we're using downriggers, we got dipsy divers, all that stuff, so stay tuned here. Fish to come. Boards are going backwards this morning. Captain Chip putting us on some fish. We got a 250 copper. Long story short, these things fight a little harder than a crawler harness and a bee chain. I said it. It's no problem. We are catching some kings on Lake Michigan. And the boards are going back. Captain Chris, he's, he does it all too. He takes boards off walleyes or salmon. The drags get used a little more in salmon fishing than they do in walleyes, I'll be honest. How's Miss Prissy doing? Does he need a backup relief here? I need a belt. You wearing out? Give me the belt. He needs a belt. Give me the, give me the, ain't uh, fishing wall I know more, Chief. I need the belt for my crotch. <laughs> that can't hurt nothing. <laughs> a lot of bullying going on out here. You on the leader? No. It's just that the fish is up in the column. Oh, now he's running. Yeah, he's taking off on him. Oh, there he is, right there he is. Yeah, that's why I said he's... Maybe it's a steely, steely Dan. I'm going to tell that fish where to go. Come on. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. It's just like a walleye. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it well. Oh, yeah. We got it's a little, in the bucket. We got a little orangey on there. A big old. These are a lot bigger silver streaks than we're used to using. Using them little bitty things. That's a big old monster spoon right there. So a lot of guys think that might just be a steelhead color back home, but that definitely a big old. What size would you call that? It's a magnum silver. Magnum. Magnum catching big fishing machine. Catching big old kings on uh, Lake Michigan with the Silver Street Posse. So Chip, kind of explain, we want to cover as much water as we can in the column, but also this way, and in order to do that, not have tangles, because these salmon run so much, explain kind of what we got going on. Well, what we're doing is we're, we're getting our, we're running all copper lines. We're running them way out from away from the boat to get them in the clean and away from everything. And you always run your shortest ones on the, top rod which is your farthest out rod so if you do get a fish it's just like walleye fishing that the fish will pull it back you pull clear over your inside lines and come right to the center of the boat then you reel it up so we work from shallowest to the deepest on your coppers then we go to our dipsies here which we got down and out we got big heavy mag uh lure jensen and so this on here this would be like short. an inside diver one yeah. and a half lure jensen this is a wire inside one Sometimes we'll run, uh, I run a braid for a high diver. You run it on like a number three way out. So you cover more ground. And then we come back to our, our downriggers, which are short and tight into the boat. I, I keep my lead short. This is kind of the way I was taught and what works for me. Um, I never go back more than 12 feet on a downrigger uh, for a lead length. Um, I like to keep them tight, especially if you, 
my kind of theory is if you come across a fish, you know, if he starts feeling the sonar or something, he wants to start swimming away. If your lure's 100 feet back there, he's gone by the time he sees that lure. Now, if that happens, the lead cores are going to pick him up. But if he stays in tight, he's going to see the downwards come over and check that out, hopefully. That's why we keep a little bit of spread everywhere. Keep shit short, keep stuff long, cover all the bases. 100 feet of background there, so we're safe. <laughs> Well, we got about 900 of it gone. Yeah, it me. So, <laughs> oh, I know, but it, it took it. So, so here's the deal. Chris took about 20 minutes to get that rod holder because there was so much like pressure on it. And it's actually, I think it's in Chicago right now. A 200 copper that's, uh, I don't know, can you see the bottom of the school there? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I see it. Oh, it's long <laughs> gone back there. We're going to eat a sandwich and we'll touch base with you. <laughs> it's going to be a long adventure, I think. <laughs> Barely see the board out there. <laughs> uh, this is the checking in with Chris. Uh, we're five minutes in now. Uh, how are we doing? Are we holding up? Do you need any water? <laughs> I'm good. He's I think I'm still gaining maybe 25 feet and you take 75. Yeah, that's not a crawler harness out there. I think the board's starting to get back to our zip code anyways. I think he just got off. So if there's one thing that I've learned with salmon fishing is the hours are not really conducive to sleeping. You know, super early in the morning and then super late in the afternoon, basically just before dark and just up until or after dark is kind of the best hours by far, especially if you have any traffic. And so some of the video stuff you'll see, we like I said, we couldn't show you some things because we're working on some new stuff, um, but we went in and out several different times. That's kind of the nice thing about salmon fishing this time of year is we're generally not going super far, probably longer of an idle to get out to the lake itself and actually how far we have to run the boat. Uh, but we had a bunch of little different things there, but the evening bite was definitely the deal. So you'll see things here where we caught them during the day, uh, but once that, that light started to go down, that was magical. Nice and warm no hoodie on, headed out for the night bite. Cause these salmon are kind of the opposite of walleyes. Early and late is the deal. So we have some ice cream, some burgers in our belly. Captain Chris, Captain Chip, PM trip. Here we go again. We're making Chris reel in the long ones. Not gonna lie. Didn't act like I was going to the bathroom, throwing that out so, you know, don't care anymore. But we switched it up a little bit. What do we got, fly? Rotator? Rotator and a fly. On some uh, copper. Chris said he has never done that. You can do it. It's a thing. 300. That's a lot of line. That one did not hit hard. I watched that thing. So Chris, how are we feeling about that? You kind of used doing this little shake off thing. I don't know <laughs> what that was all about. I mean, it's, and I had to go to the bathroom, so he's on it. But what was that shake off thing you were doing? It's like- Getting a little arm pump. Okay, well, yeah, you, yeah, you got a reel. The handle has to go around. No problem. So I think I'm about halfway in and they just took some more. Oh. white mouth. You know, one thing with salmon fishing is, is you're generally fishing pretty darn deep. And the reason for that is temperature. And so really using the fish hawk is critical to know your temperature and your speed. Those salmon often like in that 50 some degree range. 
Uh, and when it's warm like 70 something on the surface, they're just not gonna be there or anywhere near that. So tactics like uh, dipsy divers, even on wire lines, they get them even deeper. Um, you know, down riggers, and then lead cores or copper, uh, extremely long leads. We're talking in excess of 300 feet, literally longer than a football field. But those are the tactics and things that we're using to kind of spread out lines so that we don't have tangles and can cover more water, yet still fish deep effectively. So Chip, you know, temperature is an important thing, but the fish hawk is gonna tell us what that temperature is, but it doesn't mean the same as it does when you were fishing back in the day, right? So explain the difference now with the temperature of these king salmon. Well, you know, when we brought the, the first salmon in there, all Pacific salmon and stuff, we have brought any new fish in or eggs in. I don't think these fish are the same temperature specific or they really don't like the 54. Like nowadays, you can catch them in 60 degree waters. You know, they've kind of acclimated themselves to the Great Lakes, so if they've changed a little bit, I think. Uh, so we're, you know, we don't really target the 54. We like a, we like a nice temperature break. 54 meaning the degrees that they used to. Before. That's where they really liked it before, and you always had to target that. Um, I think the fish have kind of acclimated the Great Lakes, so you can catch them in 60 degree water all the time, 65. Not so temperature specific. Nowadays. So you, you've got a cannon downrigger there with your fish hawk on it, and you're going to move that up and down a little bit, and maybe that window is just going to be a little bigger, and yeah. so you don't stack your lures as tight in the water columns. Maybe we, used we to still right. find that break because there, there's two different columns of water moving, and so it's going to attract all the bait fish or all the stuff's floating right in there. So you, know, you put one or two below it, like you always kind of fish above that temperature break. And the other importance of that fish hawk is, is like this morning here, we at one point we we're doing 1.6 SOG, which is speed over ground off your GPS, but we were doing 2.4 at the ball, which was roughly 50 feet down. Yeah. So that's what's actually what you're driving off of, is driving off the ball off the downrigger where the fish hawk is. So we don't care about what our boat's doing, we care about where our lures are at. We have, we have a lot of currents out here, you know, with the wind blowing, uh, the water back and forth, so you're always playing with that, trying to figure out exactly where things are at. Get the surprise, surprise, another copper, another Chris. He's the yeah. man for real on the outside. You think I'm, I, I've had to go to the bathroom nine times today, I think. Outside, 200, and you can see the way that rod is just doubled over. Kappa, pointer boards. I feel like we're walleye fishing on steroids, basically. So one of the things when doing this, it's really not much different than walleye fishing. Sometimes these fish will actually swim with you and you gotta make sure that people think that they're coming off or they're already off and you've gotta just keep up with them. So the leaders come real and real and real. Here we go. Ship the sand directed because we've got a lot of other lines down here. We've got wire divers, we've got down riggers. We want to try to keep all that stuff out. What what little uh, Silver Street present did this one hit? Oh, that one just is pretty. That's that's blue balls. Yes, it is. There, you can out. Ross is finally reeling one in. He's got one on a 300 copper. I only do the inside ones. <laughs> and I, I couldn't use the P excuse because I've used it, I think, 12 times today. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that reel is it's going bye bye. Yeah, I don't think this is a walleye, guys. I think it's going to be a, it's gonna be a salmon. And it's crazy that we we had a real slow period there. We caught a steelhead on the same deal on a Silver Streak fly and a paddle board, whatever you want to call it. And then here we are, which I think it's going to be a king salmon. It's just about dark, and we've had a couple bites, a couple fish. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. One of the things you want to do when they get close is to point that rod actually right at the board. 
in order to keep it from going under. And then you want to get it up so Chip doesn't yell at you. It's like a non-ginger version of a walleye captain. Now we got a long way, Al. 350 feet later. I'm, I also want for the record to know that I haven't shaken my hands like uh, Chris did. Like, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm just manning up and gripping this thing. Grip it, rip it, get her. Remember, Chris, with Ross's fish, right at the nose of the fish, as hard as you can, whack them right in the nose. It knocks them out, then they float up, then you can net it. With friends like these, you need no enemies. I don't want to say anything yet because it's not in, but I am batting a thousand percent here. The lights bother me, you want the monitor off, Chris. We're pretty close. need another walleye or salmon to, you know to complete me but if you can see that we'll make sure we get in the light and we can see this place can we come over here please that is a curly cue so we tie San Diego jam knots on our VMC hooks because the VMC hooks did not fail our captain did that's not number two if Ross didn't crank the drag down, he, he was whining with the board. He wanted to the, crank the, the drag down. The line didn't break. The captain so, did. I'm gonna, we're going to have a knot Chris, tying demo Chris tomorrow. caught one on that rod. No problem. Knot Came tying right demo in. tonight. Knot Ross. tying demo. You're not going to bed till you tie 20 knots and we test them the all. And like a walleye just doesn't work. So we are at the bewitching hour, as they say. Three kings in a very short amount of time. Chris is burning this 200 in. Last almost rod literally in the water and the thing smokes it. You know, we have that happen a lot walleye fishing, but in seriousness, you never know, just a speed change or something. He was reeling really fast, so that's gonna come up a little higher in the column, and obviously moving faster, so. Sometimes it's timing, sometimes it's both, sometimes it's just a little luck. You know, that, Chris, that thing, looks like you have your hands full, it's double down. Do you want us to back the boat down for you, or? Yeah, let's go like tuna fishing and go real drive to them but in all seriousness you know that's one nice thing about lead core and copper is you have so much out on that board they kind of like that weight wears them out and you didn't have that because that board was like 30 feet from the boat yeah. and we had been running that board literally probably 150 feet out to the side so this fish is green and let's just say chris is going to eat his dinner a little later than he thought chip turned on the mood lighting one thing you want in a salmon boat is some lights. You know, early and late is so often, you know, the best thing. A big old net is not a bad deal either. And checking chips knots is another thing you want to do. So if this gets in, we're going to check that knot too. We're going to have a, a net knot tying a demo tomorrow. Chris, did you play with the drag? <laughs> no. <laughs> Very good. We'll get her in. <laughs> that on that I would call that almost a steelhead color but it's a but it's just the catcher is what it is and that's a magnum silver streak we were talking earlier today amongst us and size matters nicely done Chris that's how you get a sandwich in the nice we'll check like I must have tied that knot but holy moly oh that is a big girl right there 
So it's been a long day, literally almost a dark to dark with a short break, changing clothes, all kinds of stuff out, testing new Silver Streak lures, all kinds of different stuff. Captain Chip, Captain Chris, we were rewarded with missing dinner with a truly Lake Michigan giant salmon. Chip, leave us with something that's inspiring. <laughs> I have nothing inspiring other than catch salmon. Have fun, that's what it's all about. Having fun with your friends. Testing lures, catching fish, whatever it is. Big water fishing, that's what we're doing.